welcome to the first panel here at Feast of the Dead with the mighty Crystal Groves and Golden Bell representative. We're going to be talking about the night's panels. Uh, this is our first one at this event. So without further ado, what I'm going to ask each of the panel members to do is just introduce themselves. Tell us a little bit about uh, your knighthood, why you're here, things like that, and any hot topics you want to discuss on the panel. Spend about 30, 60 seconds doing your intro, and then we'll uh, get down to business going over questions and things like that. So without further ado, Marcus. Um, I am Marcus Bjornsson. I am Marcus Bjornsson from the Kingdom of Crystal Groves. I am a crown knight, and uh, I got that for my service as uh, Kingdom office. Okay. As a reminder, you're not just talking to me, you're talking to the people all the way back in the kitchen, so I need you to be as loud as possible. All right? Tota? I'm Satota Tota Bjornsson. Uh, I was knighted in 2000, Knight of the Flame. Uh, I got my belt for my work in founding the uh, Kingdom of Neverwinter and the early years uh, keeping their paperwork straight. I'm Tato Smaldemort. <laughs> I am a sword knight. I got that for Wacken from Crystal Groves. Hi, I'm Kelwin. I am from the Kingdom of Golden Vale. I was knighted in 2013. Um, just for, you know, I had my master rose, so I've done the event work, I've done a lot of networking with people, demos, things like that. So I'd like to talk a little bit today about leadership and teaching, maybe touch on knightly virtues. We'll see what questions come up. I'm Shiva. I got knighted today, last year, with Marcus, um, Knight of the Crown. Um, I did Kingdom Monarch, I did, um, Duchy Monarch a couple of times, a lot of times. Um, yeah. All right, well, let's get started. Uh, Tota, we're going to start with you. What does knighthood mean to you? Knighthood means to me um, pretty much it's a, it's a dedicated way of life, a service that I perform. Um, essentially, I look at it as a... A sacred trust that the people of Ampgard have entrusted with me um, that I can go forth and talk with people and help them develop their path in Ampgard, essentially. Find out what, essentially, this individual is good at, what he likes to do, what he can contribute to our community, and then help that person develop that. And also, as a really a, a service person to be gone to. If something needs to be done, the first person that should be looked to is the white belt. So that's what I feel that knighthood means to me. It's, it's an office. It's a job. It's really a labor of love because if you didn't love this game, why would you do all this stuff, you know, when you're asked? And, you know, as a volunteer organization, we look to people who consistently come forward to, you know, make things better and usually it's a white belt that's doing that. And by having the institution of knighthood as it is, we inspire people along the line to those types of service. Okay. So. Anybody else want to add anything to that? Yeah, I would like to add something because I'm a flame belt myself. I think a lot of people think of flame belts as being like master soup stirrer. And when you're a knight, you have to teach. And just teaching people how to work I mean, they're already working. Yeah, no That's really nothing you can teach them. I like to see people who can work with a crew of people. I like to see people who can delegate. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of people who are like, I've worked so hard this event, and I haven't gotten any sleep. And I'm like, uh, could you not find people to work with you? Are you not, you know, is there something going on with time? Are you not communicating with other people on the crew to get people to back you up? So it kind of makes me wonder, you know, what kind of knight they're going to be if they're not going to be able to work with other people, delegate with others, you know, manage their time. A lot of things that I do are a matter of project planning. So I have to, like, look at the calendar, figure out what needs to be done when. I like to see people who can, you know, have good time management or good work, working with others, communication, networking, all that kind of stuff. But as Tota says, it's a matter of, you know, keep doing, too. I'm not too good to pick up the trash on the ground. If it needs being done, you know, I'll do it. Sure. So we're talking knighthood. We're talking the doers, the leaders, mm -hmm. the planners. Mm -hmm. um, I heard a little bit of actually almost an officer. Yeah. Just kind of deal and possibly a role model in there. A development. Anything else that we're missing? 
Uh, I think uh, one of the most important parts of uh, of knighthood is the is that knight, your knights need to be good role models. Like you need to be able to look at your knights and say, "Oh man, like if only we had if we had two Marcuses." Like they're a they're a marker for uh, they're a marker for non knighted members to go. Oh, I wish that I was more like that. And if your if your knights kind of aren't a good target for that, then you you kind of have a problem. We hear a lot from the populace. You mentioned, uh, I'm sorry, I stumbled over my words. You mentioned okay. Facebook earlier. Knighthood discussions on Facebook get way out of hand really easily. And part of that is because there are knights out there who are not good role models. And so that's what the populace wants to see. And when they don't see it, they get upset. They're like, why do this at all? And when I was told, because I was, you know, thinking. We're going to get on okay. to that topic. So let me, let me stick with the flow here. Cause yep. I think we didn't touch base on mentorship. I think it, yeah. a big thing is giving back and what we can do because we're only here for so long. We're only, I mean, we have to help other people get to this point and it's just mentoring people to that, to get to that point. And because they can do, they can continue to do what they do, but without us, we can sit here and point out, you know, what isn't being done right, but until we give that guidance, how are they ever gonna know? And I think that's a big so part. Not just uh, the old critics, yeah. but actually yeah. mentoring the people to try and push it mm -hmm. possibly even farther than the night yeah. took it, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Um, We're not going to be Marcus, forever. you were mentioned. Is <laughs> that a goal? I don't think, I mean, yes, it's a goal, but Was I don't it think your it's... your goal? But I don't think it should be a, you know, a personal goal. It should be something... You shouldn't set out to, to become a knight, but through your actions, you should show as... Uh, Kellen has said, knightly virtue. You know, and I think if you if you behave as though you are a knight, you will eventually be recognized for being a knight. I mean, I, I guess that's hard to... It's, it's a little idealist. I'm yeah. with you. But uh, I, I think that's one of the struggles. And that's one of the conversations, right? Mm -hmm. Is it okay to say you want to be a knight? Kellen. When people come to me and they say they want to be a knight, what I always like to focus them on is what goals can you control, what goals can't you control. You can't always control whether you're going to get an award for something. What you can do is you can set goals like, I'm going to run this event and I'm going to make a profit at it. I'm going to work out with this outside agency and raise a bunch of money for charity. You know, you can't control necessarily what's going to happen, but you can control setting your own goals looking to be a well-rounded person, looking to bump up things in your resume that you might not know, you know, working with that, you can't necessarily control what people think of you. I also hear that a lot. People get very upset. They're like, you know, well, so-and-so doesn't like me and the night circle doesn't like me. You can't control any of that. What you can control is your actions towards others. That's the only thing you can control. Okay. Um, so in my opinion. <laughs> That's why there's a panel. Um, you mentioned officer. I think, Tony, you mentioned that, that knighthood is like an office. It is. Um, but the populace doesn't usually vote for that, so are knights officers? Do you consider yourself as a knight well, officer I, of the club? Yeah, I do. Um, because of the leadership role and, and the way that the populace looks at us as knights, we have to be officers. We have to be representatives of this game especially in our own field. Uh, you can almost use officer and leader interchangeably <coughs> in this thing. It's like Mike, he's a leader in his field. He's out developing new techniques, you know, taking old techniques, refining them, putting them out there. That is what the fundamental core of being a knight is about, is collecting that knowledge and passing it on so that we don't reinvent the wheel 150 times doing it, but also so that, you know, the people out there who don't necessarily have access to outside sources of you know leadership school or whatnot have a resource in amp guard by our night so therefore we are officers in that we are acting as agents of the game so you get this piece of gun for saying nice things about me it made me feel good <laughs> i think there's certain <laughs> officers we have a responsibility to our people. I mean, when you take that white belt, that is, you now give back to everybody. I mean, that is, people are going to look to you whether you want to or not. Mm -hmm. At that point, that when you go to an event, 
that's one of the things people, your new people, that's one of the first things they learn about is, you know, knights and knights wear white belts. So you're automatically being, you know, seeked out by the people. That's a position. That's a position. I mean, it's an unwritten leadership position. I mean, people are coming to you for guidance. They expect you. I mean, <laughs> they expect us to know everything <laughs> to some degree. I mean, we're supposed to know it all to a certain level, um, especially within our mm -hmm. field. Uh, so I feel like it's an unwritten responsibility leadership situation. Okay. So on, on, on the aspect of being an officer uh -huh. and the leader, I mean, to some, to some extent, to become a knight, you have to be an officer, even if it isn't necessarily an elected position. Even if it isn't necessarily an elected position, you know, um, something we expect from, knight, from potential knights is serving in some sort of leadership capacity. You know, there, there's, there's, a, there's a difference between being, you know, a qualified, you know, you have, you have all of your, your officer petitions and you, or you're a, you're a, um, a, a master. There's a difference between you know, getting your masterhood and meeting the requirements for that and showing the leadership that is representative of the knighthood. And I mean, I feel like uh, we, we are given the opportunity to wear the symbol of the game, the phoenix. And I feel that's almost as though a brand on us, you know, that, that shows that we are a representative of the game. And if we're not doing our best to represent the game well, then we're not living up to our responsibility. Okay, Pedro? Uh, I think the succinct answer to uh, whether knighthood is like an office or an award is that like regular awards, they don't really confer any responsibility. You know, if you're a warlord, you don't really have to do anything. I mean, people expect you to go out and win more stuff. But when you get a knight's belt, you are expected <coughs> to basically perform all the things that the rest of the panelists said. So I think that's the... That addition of responsibility when you receive a knight's belt is the, the dividing line between is this an award or is this an office. Okay. Um, so, so let's talk about that. One of the big things you talk about, that you hear is from officers that have been running for a long time is burnout. Mm -hmm. How does a knight, can a knight, or do you have a trick to avoiding burnout? Because knighthood doesn't happen in six months. Um, Shiva? I think the big thing is to remember there is a time to step back and I mean you have to keep yourself in mind at all for anything you have to step back take your time and other everything else will fall into place there are other people there it's okay to take six months away and kind of be there for questions but not be in the front of everything I mean balance is a big thing it's something that I had a lot of struggle learning as throughout my time was Knowing my balance, knowing when to slow down and where I was going to reach that point and not back off a little bit and let other people step in and it gives us an <coughs> opportunity. So I think we as a circle can work together in that where, you know, we have multiple flame nights, we have multiple crown nights. Other people can kind of, we can share the responsibilities when other people need that time and that break. Okay. Uh, I would just like to chime in with that because you mentioned, you know, letting other people do their thing. I think sometimes people have something and they believe that their way is the only way. Either that or they have an aspect of the game that they want to see done their way. And so they can't step back. They can't, like, release that to somebody else and let somebody else, you know, get a hand in that and learn their own lessons. Occasionally I'll give advice and people won't take my advice. It happens. It's frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, I need to remember that maybe their way will work too. I could learn something, you know, and I, I've got to be humble enough to realize that, you know, I don't know everything. Let them try. Even if they fail, they've learned something, you know, and I'll be there to pick up the pieces. Yeah. But, you know, let other people do their thing. And that's an experience for us as well. I mean, we're learning. Things are changing. Things aren't the same as five years ago, you know. And we're seeing the new things that other people are doing. And that it's a working relationship, and I think that's a sure. good thing. And it helps keep both sides from burnout. Okay. And I learn a lot from Mike. Like, I learn how to have a sense of humor. And can I have some gum? <laughs> 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 yep. Or punch your thigh. On, in relation to burnout, something I've found is having hobbies that aren't related to the game is an excellent way to you know, step aside when, you know, say I'm on the board of directors and we've had some detailed discussion and I've been 
say, yelling at Mono for the last, you know, two weeks, I'll go off and go fly fishing. I, I mean, it's my other hobby. And so I'll disappear for a week or two and come back refreshed and, you know, it fights off the inevitable, you know, banging your head against the wall. Sure. I, I mean, I know I'm not on the panel, but I had a conversation earlier. If you're not having fun, you need to take a break until you're having mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Or find the whole point of this game is fun. So let's talk about that. <coughs> How did you decide what knighthood path you wanted to, to pursue? Or, or did that choose you? Uh, Tato? I was looking at Tota. I'm sorry. Tota? <laughs> You, you sat too close together. I don't get it either. It's another key night. Sure? I had that with Tombo back in Neverwinter. We had the really, my defining trait is my gum. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone's not getting any gum. Yeah, you. <laughs> I need to freshen up. All right. Um, <laughs> he's got me laughing. What was the question again, GC? I'm sorry. Did you choose your knighthood path or did it choose you? Uh, no, it kind of cho chose me. Um, when we were founding Neverwinter, um, we had kind of a Han Solo, Captain Kirk approach to, you know, organizing things because nobody had really organized on that level that many parks to make a kingdom thing. So we had a lot of stuff that was there. And I never really wanted to be a flame knight. You know, I always wanted to be a sword knight, but too old, broken, fat, and crippled. But uh, it was just through doing those things that, you know, it just kind of fell in my direction. It, just, it was almost like a, a, a flame knight cascade. At first, I started, you know, organizing meetings, and then before you know it, we were doing writing caporas and, you know, getting legal paperwork done up. And then before I knew that, I was in uh, office for prime minister for five terms in a row because they didn't want anybody, they didn't trust anybody else. And then I got out of that, and I was like, well, now I can relax. And suddenly, I get the guild master of knights and the king coming up to me and going, yeah, we're going to knight you in flame. Really? I'm not a flame knight. <laughs> So it just, you know, just kind of happened. Tato? I didn't, I didn't choose the whack life. <laughs> <laughs> the whack life chose me. Fair enough, fair enough. Because that's where your passion lies, right? Hmm? That's where your passion was? Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Um, it's kind of... It's, I often kind of liken it to a drug. I really like fighting. It's a lot of fun. I go out and have more fun. I want to have more fun. And you keep having more fun and more fun. And you need, like, bigger and bigger hits of whack to keep having fun. And eventually you just, you just feel nothing. Like, you just feel nothing inside. And your life is just wax, man. I appreciate you avoiding the wax thing. Oh, Right. Oh, some gum. Some gum. <laughs> there was a conversation gum. on Facebook about <laughs> someone. Okay, just, uh, there was a conversation going out there about should someone feel comfortable approaching a knight or, or even a noble to join their belt line. Uh, thoughts? I mean, I think it depends on how well you know that knight. Like, you know, I went to keep on the border, keep on the borderlands uh, two weekends ago, and well, it, this didn't happen to me. I'd feel kind of awkward if someone came up to me and say, hey, I, you know, give me a page belt or something like that. Because I don't necessarily know many people out in the Rising Windsor and Taldegore. But I know a lot of people in CG. I I'm not necessarily going to throw a belt at someone, but you know, if, I, if, they, if I get along with them, if I know them reasonably well, if they say, hey, I want a belt, I'm going to at least give it a decent thought. I mean, it's... It, it, I think there, there's a lot of taboos with people asking for awards, asking for recognition, things like that. I don't necessarily think we should have those taboos. You know, there, there, is, some, there is some merit to seeing what you want and going for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, I'm not saying you should be out there pandering for awards or for, you know, to get into a belt line, but sometimes you need to speak up because you're going to get overlooked otherwise. Okay. Anybody want to add to that? No, Ultimate question oh, is, should yeah. people feel comfortable coming up to you and yeah. talking about joining your belt line? I have had people at least very heavily hint that mm -hmm. they want a knight's belt. So they'll be like, so I want to know about being a knight, but I could never be <coughs> belted to so-and-so. And maybe, and sometimes, I, you know, I haven't had the opportunity to take anyone yet. What I'll do is I'll talk with them about what their interests are, because that's really what's important. And I'll find out, you know, what they're passionate about in the game. 
I had one lady who I didn't really want to take her as a page or a man at arms because she was very artistic and very interested in art. And I knew I could direct her to the right people. And, you know, there are other people who they may be belted or not, and I can still help them out. I can help out people who aren't in my belt line as well, you know? Okay, so let's soften the question a lot. I think this happens in the fighter community. Um, maybe I don't want to be on the belt line. Maybe I just want to spend some time getting to know you or, or start that conversation. If, how would you advise a new player to, to approach that or, or ask and talk to you about fighting? You're so scary. You are. I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that, that new players should always feel, should always feel comfortable asking nights mm -hmm. for advice. And I think you can tell real quick who's a really bad night when they turn those kinds of people away. You know, and sometimes mm -hmm. people aren't always going to get the answers they want. Like if someone's like, hey, uh, you know, what can I do to kill you, you know, on the field or something like that, you might get an answer like, well, it's, it's going to take a lot. You're going to have to work on this and this first. And a lot of, that turns off a lot of people. Uh, I've always kind of felt that like uh, your belt line is your is your formalization of uh, mentorship relationships, and you should already have that. Uh, I don't think there's anything <coughs> wrong with asking people for a belt. I think it happens a lot. I think personally, like as as or at least I feel that as an expert in my field, like I I know who I want to belt and who I don't want to belt, and I go and I find them. Um, okay. Um, what are some tips? For a new player that just they read the book, they played a couple of times, and, and they think they would like to pursue knighthood. Any tips, Shiva? Don't give up. I mean, be get a tough skin because nothing comes easy. Nothing. And there's top trials and tribulations through every either path. I mean, any of the paths. Serpent, you're you're getting critique. Fighting, you're there's nothing. You're constantly working. You've got to have a tough skin, and you've got to be willing to take a lot. You know, it's not always going to be a give and take. Sometimes it's give, 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 and that's just part of your dedication. That just shows who you are as a person and your character, but just be prepared for that. Um, okay. There's going to be times where you want to just throw everything away and walk away, and it's getting through that that's going to, in the end, it makes it worth it. Uh, I think extending from Shiva's mention of dedication that I believe it's very important to make absolutely certain that you love what you're doing. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, for, for example, I'm at passingly okay, Garber. A lot of people have said, hey, you know, you should go after your Serbian belt or something like that. And I'm okay at it. I feel that I could probably eventually get good enough to do something like that. But, man, I hate every second in front of a sewing machine. Like, I would rather, I would rather cut my leg off with a ball-peen hammer than <laughs> sew garb. And I use that implement. On purpose, that. because that's I what's left of my sewing that. machine right now. <laughs> but just make sure you love what you do. Make sure it's fun for you, because it's like what, like a ten-year journey, yeah, or something like yeah. that. If you can't, if you can't do it for a decade with a smile on your face, it's probably not worth doing. Kind of yeah. like marriage. <laughs> You're marrying the game. Yeah, okay. that's a good. I mean, Marcus, oh, I'm sorry. as he said, with you know, you've got a decade of dedication. You need to expect to be there day in and day out. I mean, it, it is not. It, it is not a you know a passive thing. You're not going to. You're not going to. You know, achieve the recognition needed to, you know, to become a knight by not being there every week. You know, because your park needs you, and that's the the aspect of leadership that I've said with with knighthood. Your park needs you to be there, and if you're not there, you're you're not doing the you're not you're not doing your time basically. No. Okay, um, that's a really good answer. <laughs> <laughs> You're lying of gum. You know, and I think that's why it's important to think of knighthood not as an award, but as an office and as a duty. Okay, so that, that's a great transition. We've talked about the 10-year struggle, give or take. I mean, everybody's path is, is different, right? But we, we said it's a struggle. You said thick skin. We talked about it's an office uh, in many aspects for life. There's roles and responsibilities for it. So why become a knight? <coughs> what, is it fulfilling, or are you starting to question why you ever did it in the first place? It's definitely fulfilling, uh, but I do question it every day. <laughs> every day I go, you know, when I put this belt on, I go, is this really worth all of this? And then I sit and I think that, you know, would the game be better or worse if I took my belt off and stopped helping and interacting? And always 
that answer has been the game will be worse. I need to keep going. I need to inspire people. I need to help people. I need to be present to bring that new generation of leadership up so that they don't have to go through all of the struggles of figuring out what to do. You know, by being there, because I've done it all, I can say, hey, you know, we've done this. We tried this, this, and this. Um, maybe your new idea has some merit. Let's work on it mm -hmm. and develop it from there. So that's what I think that the, the, the whole night for life and being worth it is, is every time I get that new person like Marcus and Shiva, I've worked with them over the years and gotten their ideas and, and pretty much threw them under the bus. All right, you've got a great idea on how we can do this. Go do it. But, but, but you came up with the idea. Do it. And they did. So, and it makes me fulfilled to see that, to be able to sit on a panel with two people that I have personally mentored and helped and have them give that experience out. It's extremely fulfilling for me. Shiva, you wanted to add something? I think it's just the people's reactions. Um, as somebody, as a Crown Knight, when you're in office, <coughs> sometimes that's not always the most friendly position to hold. But at the end of the day, if you can make a difference, seeing everybody else's mm -hmm. coming in after you know a hard day and seeing people just be appreciative, that that makes it all worth it to me. People, the thank yous, the you know you've really helped. That to me makes everything worth it. No matter what bad day, no matter how many times I wanted to just throw everything away and just walk away, people's reactions and how I can affect other people really makes it worth it. Marcus. Um. You know, I've been an officer basically my entire career in AmpGuard. Uh, I can think of maybe six months where I wasn't an officer, and that was because we had offset. We had offset periods where you know I was going from being you know monarch to being PM. But I do that because I love this game. I love make seeing you know 150 people in a in a in a feast hall because they're all here for the same reason and if if my time makes that a little bit better for someone that's what makes it worth it Kelly, did you want to add yeah actually um i do some cross gaming which is my hobby you know i can go out and beat on people and have no responsibilities Woo! <laughs> where do i and in this other game that I play, their knights sit on a noble council and make decisions for the game. And according to our rule book, the only official duty knights have is to make other knights. And, I mean, so when you have people around, it's like, well, they want to be knights themselves. And I think other people have already alluded to this. It's seeing other people make their goals and achieve and seeing what they can bring to the game. You know, it's just improving other people's Amped Guard experience and letting them improve yours as well. Mm -hmm. Beating up people is like literally my only responsibility. No, oh. yeah. I should have thought of that about that. I want my gun back. <sighs> but I don't get a choice. <laughs> well, that, the okay, flame so life chose me. <laughs> here's an awkward question and I, We'll just spend a moment on it because I don't really understand it, but how do you feel about getting the same Knight's Belt twice? Awesome. Uh -huh. I'm working on my Master Smith. People are like, why would you want your Master Smith? You've already got your Master Rose. Why don't you go for a Garber or something, you know, be a Serpent Knight? It's because I really love to do this and see, you know, make my own goals and see if I can do it. It's just see if I can do it. I think it's going to be awesome. That's not a, a, a second belt in the same order. That's just another masterhood name. under the same umbrella. Okay. You're right. We're, you're we're right. Move <laughs> I don't understand that, so we're going to go along with it. It was good for an awkward question. It was a good answer to an awkward question. Oh. Right? You saved it. And the other yeah. thing is, there's, there's all of us here are single belt knights. So I can see where they might be saying, you know, um, you're a flame knight and a serpent knight. Maybe that's what they meant. May, uh, perhaps. No, that's not. No, right. that's not. Okay. <laughs> um, Next. But, nice. nice they can come to us after oh. the panel, and we yes. can explain. Yes. yes. No, 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 no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we talked about inspiring. So we're going to real quick and go down the line. How do you inspire Ampgard 
And is it a little bold to say you're inspirational? Marcus, you're on the left. How do I expire it? Fear? <laughs> it's, uh, okay. No, I mean, um, by living as an example, if, if you aren't doing, if you aren't, if you aren't participating in the game and to the best of your ability, then you're a bad example. I mean, you, you, need to, you need to do what you do in the game as good as you can. And if you, I don't know where I'm articulating it. I, uh, no problem. Okay. I think that uh, in terms of like, inspiring people, I don't think that there's anything that you can directly do to like try to inspire a specific person. I think the only thing that you can really do is just, is just work as hard as you can. And if that's not inspiring people, maybe you're not working hard enough, I guess, if that's your goal. That's what I meant. I think that just knowing that that's what you're supposed to do, be that inspiration, if you've got that mindset and you're aware of that as a knight, instead of just like, oh, well, I'm a knight. And <coughs> you know, I try to look good. I try and wear my garb on the field. We have a rainy, cold event here. But, you know, I know that I'm a knight and I'm supposed to be inspiring, so I'm not going around grumbling and complaining about it. I'm going around trying to be cheerful, trying to, you know, just be like, yeah, amped guard. Because that's what people want to see. And I kind of feel that way. But it's kind of like putting on a persona, too. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you know, you sometimes have to have your game face on because you're at amped guard. Yep. Um, all right, just because... I hit everybody with this question when we start talking about knights and, and different awards and things like that. We romanticize knighthood an awful lot. People, it's arguably the greatest of awards in Amp Guard. We talk a lot about role models and things like that. Why are we so averse to taking people's belts and saying you're no longer acting to that level? And I'm going to talk to the, the former monarchs and then if anybody else wants to chime in. So, Marcus, I start with you. So, Shiva? I think... I think that's something we should be more accepting of. I feel like just because you were at one point um, a, a great example, your actions are continuously, just because you get that belt, that doesn't mean everything stops. You're continuously being watched at that point. At that point, you're actually on a higher pedestal. You're not only being watched by your peers, you're being watched by the populace. And I feel like your actions directly affect the rest of your circle. And if we have one person or even a couple people acting in a negative way, that affects all of us. And then that puts out, it's hard to interact with our people when they have this general stigma of a knight. I mean, if they have a couple people ruining it for everybody, it's very hard for us as knights to interact with our people and bring that back up. So I feel like we need to put our foot down and not tolerate things. Um, as a former officer, I have a policy. I don't care if your friend, family, you act a fool and things got to be taken care of. I mean, there is no middle ground. I mean, we are adults and we need to act like it. This isn't kindergarten and there's there's consequences for your actions. Anybody else want? Um, I think there's a big deal where we don't want to take people's belts because it is a 10 year yeah. journey. Mm -hmm. We recognize the amount of work that it took to get there. The other thing is people have different differing views of knighthood. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, other knights I've talked to are like, well, that's just who he is. You know, they're not everybody sees that there's a character requirement, you know. Now what I would like to see is if there is a knight who is acting the fool, peer counseling from the other knights. Because that's what we're supposed to mm -hmm. be. We're supposed to be a circle of knights. However, not everybody believes that they are equals and they sometimes don't want to listen to their peers. Okay. I've just always kind of I've always kind of wondered like why why it is such a such a harrowing thing as well. You know, I've always kind of entertained the idea of like maybe when I'm done fighting, you know, I'm done being like a sword knight. Like why wouldn't I retire my belt? Like what would be wrong with saying, oh, you know, Tata was a great fighter and he was a knight for like five years and that was a great thing. Mm -hmm. And then he just stopped being one. Yeah, I've I've always wondered why it had to be a permanent office. It was just just kind of a kind of a stray thought, I guess. Hmm. No, I think it's that, that's interesting. 
I, I think that's a really good perspective. What if somebody did retire? Not drama, not anything, just I'm not interested in holding this office anymore. Right. right. Yep. Yeah. And, and if somebody would look, be looked down on that, that's, I think that's a great perspective. Um, commenting on a little bit on what Mike said, I've often thought about setting my belt aside because, you know, time and effort and energy wise, being sick, I really don't have it in me to do the stuff I used to do all the time. And I sit back and I look and say, do I live the example that I set? Sometimes I say no. Most of the times I say yes. And I have seriously thought about, you know, stepping away from my belts and get my regular life done in and then come back into the game later with a fresh perspective and maybe try and earn a different belt. So it, it, it's out there. Um, it's something that all night should consider. If you're not actively contributing to your field as a leader or whatnot, you know, maybe you should <coughs> retire that belt and concentrate on <coughs> certain other things. I mean, there's no shame in it. You were a knight, you served honorably. It's just you can't keep that level of obligation up and, you know, step aside and let the next guy come in. Marcus? I don't, I don't really have much to add to that. I kind of agree with, you know, Mike and Toda. We should all retire our belts right now. Right now. <laughs> Let's do it. And go to Tilted Kilt. <laughs> That's what people say. No, don't do that, guys. The belts were interesting, but tilt the kilt like, eh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> they have, like, a freaking burger that's, like, this tall. I mean, and girls, that's but, why like, you go, he's only interested in your Anyway. Meat. Um, protein. <laughs> so, let's talk about the future of Amcard. Your knights, your seasoned leaders in each of your fields, your respective players. What's next for Amcard? Where do you see the game going? What do they need to improve upon? Uh, the national leadership needs to um, really codify things. We had a great opportunity when the uh, award standardization came along to make the playing field of awards and the, the really the, the pseudo game within our game more <sighs> homogenous. And it was a great idea, it was a great concept, but there was a couple failings in it and that we homogenized these awards and what they meant, but we didn't homogenize the systems for earning these awards. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, if you have an older kingdom that has more stick, a sword belt from that kingdom is going to be harder to get than, say, out in a newer kingdom where the stick hasn't developed. Same thing with arts and sciences stuff. You're going to have different levels of masterhood and whatnot, and I think we, as the older generation, should have called out more for a standardization across the board with how we do it as opposed to just our awards. And that's something we could do for the future, you know? And, and that's what we're talking about. Yep. You're, you're, you've got the magic wand, you're going to change amp guard. Marcus, what would you do? Um, I mean, I think my view on it's a little bit more appropriate for the leadership panel, but we need to be more professional. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a game, but there is an aspect of this game that is real life. Mm -hmm. You know, we rent facilities, we handle money, we have gut, we are, we're, you know, ostensibly supposed to all be nonprofit organizations. And we absolutely need to meet federal and state laws. We need to uphold those in a, in a, you know, a appropriate manner. And this, you know, going by the seat of our pants, we'll just, you know, we'll figure it out. Captain Kirk, Camp Garden. What he said, Cap Captain Kirk Camp Guarding, it's got to go. Education. I mean, we've been doing this for yeah. 30 years. We need to have our ducks in a row. Yeah. Okay. I think See getting you? the educational information out there because part of that is people won't be able to get their ducks in a row if they don't have the information there to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think we, as some of the more veteran people, it's our responsibility to, as we learn the things that need to be done, put that on paper. Because, yeah, we can tell people, but... Put that on paper, give that to somebody, pass that along, because that's experience, education, experience, and pass that along so that more people know what they're doing, because to let somebody flail without any guidance, it, that's not helping, and if we get more education out there, we're going to have things done the right way, and the more education that's on a grander scale, the more you can go from one event to another, to another, to kingdom to kingdom, and it's going to be the same. You're not going to have one place is doing it this way, except for, I mean, there are going to be things that are going to change due to, you know, location. But 
if we can get the education out there, everybody will be more on the same page and things will be easier, you know, for all of us. I mean, and for new players coming in and for them to get into these positions will be easier because the information's there for them. I think handbooks should be out there. Um, a lot of g other games, they give a lot more information to their newer players than we do. I mean, we have our roles to play. We have our Kapora. But what do we have for how to get any, how to get to play, how to do things like more than, okay, you can play the game with this book. There's more than just on the field. And I feel like we don't give enough information to our newer players for that. How to get into these services, how to do your ANS, things like that. Kelvin, real quickly, anything to add? Um, you talked about changes that need to occur in AmpGuard. When I came into AmpGuard, it was a much more contentious time. We had, you know, a lot of what I would call the debating society. And I think people are becoming a little bit more courteous. I think some of that is people being a little bit more professional. And for knights, knights used to best be able to say or do whatever they wanted. You know, and some people would would justify that with, well, I'm, you know, an anti-paladin, and that's what they used to be like, and they used to be these big tough guys. That doesn't fly anymore. I just don't think that flies anymore. And we are opening up to more than, you know, the majority of our players are white men. We're getting more people of color, more women, and, you know, people of different sexual orientation, different gender orientation, and the game needs to be welcoming for them. And as knights, if we're supposed to set the standard, we need to watch our language. We need to, you know, even if we grew up where, you know, saying a certain word meant a certain thing, we need to make sure that we are welcoming to all the players because the other players in the game will follow our lead. Okay. Tato? I mean, I think... I agree a lot with uh, with Shiva's idea. It was something that I was going to mention, and I think it's uh, the education is really important. Uh, I think the other thing that we definitely need to do is as a community to uh, to kind of just put a foot down. We need to ban fireball from events. <laughs> fireball, it ruined my emergency. my life. I got ethylene glycol poisoning. My hair fell out. My <laughs> wife Roberta left me. My Facebook is ruined. People basically share fireball stuff all over it. I can't even talk to my family anymore. We need to get rid of it. Um, we need to get rid of it. As a note, he's talking about the liquor, not the spell. One thing that I think is important, we start talking about professionalizing. You mentioned boards of directors, and we talked about educating. There is no better resource than contacting your local accounting experts, mm -hmm. your local legal experts, Mm -hmm. uh, there's only so much that, that Wikipedia and we're going to do that. So when we start talking about the legal thing that Marcus talked about, I just I can't encourage it enough. No matter what you heard about so-and-so in another land, contacting your local experts is the only way to make sure that you're going to be in compliance with the rules that affect you and where you play. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, I just can't say that enough. Everybody wants to give legal tips. And, I watched uh, Law and Order. Uh, <laughs> 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 a lawyer that, that's on the payroll. Yeah. I want to see your information. Uh, we only have a couple. Okay, Marcus. I was going to say, seconds. and make sure to get their licensure to make sure they're actually a lawyer or a CPA because, well, let's be honest, there's a lot of people on Facebook that say a lot of things. You bet. And legal advice on Facebook is not always the best. All right. On that note, we got to wrap things up real quickly. Uh, we didn't hit everything that everybody wanted to talk about. But the floor is yours, 30, 60 seconds. Each one of you is going to get opportunity. If there's one thing that you want to make sure that you pass on or you want to footstop or remind somebody that's already been talked about, now is your opportunity. Who is ready to go first? <laughs> go away. <laughs> go. <laughs> we talk about this game and we talk about, you know, protecting this game and being part of this game and what this game is going to be like after we leave. The game is you guys. The game is the people. You know, without you guys, we wouldn't have a game. Without you guys, we wouldn't be knights. So I just think that that's a practical thing to keep in mind, that, you know, the game is the people, the game is all of us, the game is our community. Tona? I think I want to uh, talk about the family aspect of AmpGuard, and not as in husband, wife, children, and whatnot, but really what's important to me is that AmpGuard is my extended family. Mm -hmm. 
I may not agree with everybody. I may dislike people. But when it comes down to it, we're all here for the same thing, to have fun and do it. And if you need something done, you know, ask your family members. Get involved. You know, we're all doing this because we want to have fun. We dress up in dresses. We hit each other with pool toys. You know, we're doing it for the same reasons. Let's put our bickering aside. And, yeah, you do. Pretty boy. Quiet. And, you know, just, just start interacting with each other like family as opposed to just weirdos in the park. Much better game experience. Tato? Uh, I mean, I don't have a lot to add that anyone else has said, but this has definitely been the best panel ever, and I want to commem commemorate doing this together with you guys by sharing my last piece of gun. I split it, I split it into five pieces. There you go. Go ahead, buddy. You weren't dead. Are you going to give us toast? Are we going to toast? No, chew the gum. Chew the gum, Lisa. Marcus. Um, I guess, stepping back to what we've talked about throughout the panel, we asked, is it appropriate to set your goal as being a knight? You know what? Yes, it is. But if you want to be a knight, step up. If you know, there, there is so much to do with these events. There's so much to do on a day-to-day -day basis at your park. Step up, be a leader, just by virtue of helping out and, you know, you know, asking your park prime minister if there's anything you can help with. Asking your 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 local monarch if there's anything you can help with. Champions. You know, mm. champions. Champions yeah. love having people that help mm -hmm. run battle games. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of those things, if you step up and you step up enough times, you're going to get recognized. Shiva. I think feeding on what Marcus said, don't be afraid to ask if somebody needs help because I can tell you as, like, this really doesn't go with the Knights panel, but I'm sure the Flame Knights here, you know, agree. An autocrat's one person. They have 200 of you. They are not going to hunt you down, trying to think to hunt you down while they're trying to manage everything that they have. Ask, pull them aside, say, hey, you know, do you need help? Or if you see your officers at park, ask them. See where you can help because you're never going to find those opportunities unless you put yourself out there too. We didn't get where we are by sitting back and waiting for somebody to come to us. You have to be a go-getter, and you're, that's just how it's going to be. Like, there are opportunities there just find them and ask for them. Don't be afraid to ask for help either along the way. So to sum up, I think a lot of ways what folks said, don't wait to act like a knight until mm -hmm. you've got a knight's belt. You should always yep. act like a knight. Always right? act like a knight. First statement? Okay. Hey, thank you guys You're for welcome. taking time out. You got the luxury. It's cold outside and rainy and you came inside. So but in the end, thank you all for taking the time, spending some time with us. Um, and for everybody out there that, that, that uh, sat along and listened to it in the panel, if we could just get a quick round of applause for our panel members. I appreciate it. Hi, Goldcrest here from Amgar Leadership University. Thanks for taking the time to watch our video. Please do us a favor, we'd love to hear from you. Go ahead and leave us a note by leaving a comment below. If you'd like to hear about new and upcoming events we've got going on, make sure you hit the subscribe button while you're here as well. Then, jump over to Facebook and find us at Amgar Leadership University and that way you can keep up to date with our latest releases and the events that we're going to be visiting. If you'd like some more information about leadership and service in AmpGuard, you can also visit our friends at Crown and Flame. You can find them online at crownandflame.com or on Facebook, also at Crown and Flame. Lastly, if you just want to hear more about AmpGuard and the live action role playing game, make sure you swing by AmpGuard.com. Thanks again for watching the video.